What's up, nerds? Welcome back to The Raging Rainbow. My name is Dylan, doing a comic book review today of Teen Titans Academy number two. And this story is... It's going somewhere. But... Oh, God. Let's talk about it. Let's go ahead and just roll right into this. So we start out with this little scene of uh, her name is Alinta. If y'all don't uh, recognize her right off, she is. Hold on, let me fix my focus. She is basically the new uh, tokenized non-binary Flash. Oh, I'm sorry. Tokenized non-binary handy capable Flash because she also is missing both of her legs, I think, below the kneecap. So she runs on blades. So as we can see, she is being pursued by none other than Red X. And so she's having this thing where it's like she falls down out of the chair or whatever. And so she's like, what are you waiting for? Like, you're going to kill me or whatever. And so we do this weird thing where he says that he's always three moves ahead. And she says, OK, why do we not just skip to your last move then? And then we have this thing where he like turns around, but it's actually supposed to go. I think counterclock or clockwise. Yeah. Because you can see the speech bubble goes from like there to there to there. And he's like, shut up. But you could also kind of like the way she says it. Why don't we just cut to your last move? Like you could literally just go right there and pretty much still same same thing. But whatever. So we get this shot of like the whole team or whatever. They're all practicing and stuff. And then we see this thing where I guess basically Cyborg gives uh, a Linta non-binary flash. He basically gives them i guess if we're supposed to, her gives her the damn like idea to go by the name bolt so she's like okay yeah i kind of like that name so then he looks over and sees that uh matt price is just kind of sitting there and he's like play well he thinks he's playing chess but then he goes up to him and he just says checkmate in seven moves and he's like it's not chess and he's like oh, okay yeah because i just i kind of made that up but what are you playing and he says it's called Ari Ma? I don't know. I've never played it before, but he says it's kind of like it, but it has like some marked up spaces. So you can see it has like X's or whatever. And it's a very different game or whatever. So he's like, oh, okay, well, cool. But, you know, it's field day. So why aren't you like physically exercising? And this is where he goes on to explain to him, well, because I'm stronger than everybody. Hell, I'm even stronger than you. So there's no real point in me physically exercising. It's more important for me to exercise my mind. Because, I mean, as far as physically, I'm already at the top of the game. Now I just need to make sure this is at the top of the game so that I'm kind of like matching. So right at that moment, they decide to call a cool down or whatever. And then everybody packs it up to go inside. And then Cyborg kind of tries to get Matt's like origin story from him. But Matt tells him, like, I actually don't have like a family. I don't have an origin. I just like woke up last year and I had been rescued by like. Um, some sailors on a ship, the USS Eisenhower. And that apparently he had just fallen out of the sky. So they didn't know anything about like what happened. And so he's just like saying like everything it's like before waking up on that ship has just been a blank. And so Cyborg is like, wait a minute, but your name is Matt Price. So if you know your name, then he's like, no, no, no. I only took on this name because it comes from like an old poem or whatever. So he like recites the part of the poem or whatever. And then they get ready to go inside. So we cut back to uh, Dick and Corey Starfire, because if you remember from the last issue, they were getting ready to hook up because it was it was Dick's birthday. So Corey decided to give him some some good for his birthday. So we're seeing the after effects here, the afterglow, if you will. And so they're, they're still worrying. Well, Dick really is the one who's worrying about like what happened to the Red X mask, because it disappeared after it was given to him at the birthday party. And they're pretty sure one of the students took it, but they're not sure. So she's trying to tell him, like, calm down. It'll turn up. And he's like, yeah, but on who? Who's going to be wearing it? So that's where she's telling him, like, calm down. Like, it's not like a magic thing. Like, you said it yourself. Red X is just a legend to them. It was just an idea. Like, it's not going to, like, come back and haunt us in any kind of way. But then Corey kind of switches it up on him. And she kind of, like, 
she does this thing where she's like, okay, but what is it that's really bothering you? Because I know you're not this worried about all of that. So he's like, no, you know, you're right. It's not this. It's actually, uh, it has to do with Bloodhaven, which is where he actually, it's kind of like his Gotham City as Nightwing or whatever. So he's like telling her like, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to spend more time there. And so she's like, oh, okay, with her. So this is where he's like, no, it's not about that. And then because they're referring to Barbara, because Barbara Gordon, Oracle, Batgirl, whatever you want to like refer to her as, she's the one who told like Dick, like, you're going to need to come back to Bloodhaven. There's stuff here that needs you. So Corey's thinking like he's going to go be with her. He's like, no, 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 it's not that. Like, I have responsibility. And she's like, well, you have responsibility here, too. What about that? And he says, like, I, I can juggle both. And that's where she was like, I really didn't want to hear that. But she's like, I have no doubt about that. So that's where she's like, yeah, we need to get back to work. Maybe we, the central computer can scan the tower for your mask. So she just kind of tries to switch the subject and leave. Classic woman move. Good job, Corey. So we go back to the students and we see this thing where Tubi is trying to convince Matt to like switch roommates with him. And he's talking about how, like, you know, Stitch is so lame. Like, don't you want to be with Roundhouse? Like, he's an established Titan. So he's there's, like, lots of, like, reputation there or whatever. And Matt's like, no, I'm fine with my roommate or whatever. And then he tells him, like, he's not going to switch and he walks away. And then all of a sudden, Stitch, who Tubi was just talking shit about, walks up. It's like, it's okay. I heard everything you were saying. And then proceeds to give Tubi money because apparently Stitch was trying to pay Tubi off to like become Matt's new roommate because Stitch is the one who's actually sick of rooming with Matt because what is it that Stitch says? Roundhouse is never here. He's active roster. He's off on missions. Matt stays in our room all day brooding, playing not chess and driving me up the wall. You got to try again. And then that's where Tubi's like, all right, all right, I'll try it again. But my fee just doubled to which Stitch is like, why? He's like, well, because I know you're desperate. So there is a real life lesson for you there. Never let your desperation show. So we cut back over to uh, Nightwing and Cyborg and they're having this like discussion as well because he wants some advice on what he should do about Corey and he also needs to like find out about the mask. But we can see like the other like Titan recruits or whatever, the first year students are in this classroom with Beast Boy and they're about to have like another lesson. And I love stuff like this, especially like when it happens in TV and movies, but even in here, it works pretty well. I love when there's like a conversation going on in the foreground, but in the background, there's just some like wackiness going on. And like the people in the foreground are just carrying on as though nothing is happening. I love skits like that. So that's what basically what we got here. So, I mean, we see this thing. And this was one thing that kind of annoyed me because um, when he's coming up, Cyborg is like, hey, Dick. And he responds by saying, whoa, man, it's Nightwing around the kids. And then Cyborg responds by saying, Mr. Nightwing, if you're nasty. To which Dick is like, what? And Cyborg is like, it's a song, I think. Never mind. Cyborg, how dare you? How dare you not, n- not be certain about a Janet Jackson song? How dare you, sir? If you're going to quote the damn thing, at least be certain of it. At least do that. So anyway, we, we go from there to where like he's trying to ask where like he tells him like, you know, I messed things up with Corey or whatever. He's like, wow, that was fast. But then um, Matt Price walks up and tells him that he's is it, he's asking like, will it be OK if I'm a little bit late today? I had some research going on that I need to finish or whatever. So Cyborg tells him, yeah, fine, hurry. And then they go on with the conversation between Nightwing and Cyborg and what is it that he says? Um, that oh yeah, because they start talking about how Matt kind of reminds them of Connor Superboy, and so they're like, it's just kind of weird, and it kind of like worries them or whatever because he has strength powers, he doesn't really have like much memory of where he came from or anything, so they don't think he's a Superboy clone, but maybe he's like another experiment from like Cadmus or whatever. And then Nightwing's like, we're all experiments, Sai. So good point. But then um, Alinta comes out of the like training or whatever because she was in her wheelchair. So she tells Cyborg like, yeah, I didn't know we were going to be doing exercises. Can I go grab my blades real quick? Because I obviously can't run without my my blades. So he's like, all right, yeah, just do it real fast because you're a speedster. So that's where Nightwing turns to him. He's like, wait a minute, isn't this home ec? And he's like, yeah. So what happened when you <laughs> like he just just yeah, it sure is. And then go on with the conversation. So. He asked him, like, 
was the problem between you and Corey was it Barbara? And Nightwing's like, it's always Barbara. So then he asks him, like, have you seen the red X mask? And Cyborg tells him, like, no, but maybe try the command center. And then he goes inside and he tells the kids to aim between the legs. It always works no matter what shape he takes. And that's where Beast Boy's like, hey. So I like that. Genuine comedy. I do enjoy stuff like that still. But as Dick is walking away, he gets to like the command deck or whatever and sees that Red X is in there downloading some stuff. So he immediately tries to confront him and then Red X throws some Red X's at him. And then he takes the little like flash drive or whatever and proceeds to like get away. So Nightwing, of course, tries to chase after him and he like alerts everybody. And the first one to actually answer is Donna Troy. So he's telling her, like, I need you to, like, converge on this location or whatever. And they're like, okay, but what are we looking for? He says, don't worry. You'll know it when you see it. So they get to this stairwell and they're asking him, like, which way do we go? And he says, down. So he hits the thing to get the fire hose because he's going to jump down and do, like, that whole routine. Like, you know, like Cirque du Soleil type, Soleil type shit. So we see that Don is standing there. She's like, um, that thing's too long. You're just going to end up hitting the bottom. But before he does, Alinta comes running and manages to save him. So when they get down there, they finally realize that actually it was just a diversion. Red X actually just threw his cape down. And that was what seemed like it, which I was like, if it was just, I guess maybe it's weighted down or whatever. But I was like, wouldn't it have been billowing like open and falling much more slowly than if it were connected to an actual person, but whatever. So we see that Red X actually did manage to get away and then he jumps off the building. So we see that the Teen Titans decide, you know what, we need to call an assembly. So they converge everybody. We see tokenized Wally West right here up in front. We see the non-binary, you know, quilted pattern. And then there's Red Arrow, right? I think that's who we're going with now. And then Brick also in front. So I'm still pretty sure that Red X is Dane because, again, Dane the little blonde kid that came in all cracked out in the first issue. Like, so here in the beginning in the training, he's just standing there and then we don't see him again until this assembly when he's just sitting here, just looking very smug. So, and then this whole misdirection with like, well, what's going on with Matt? He's got issue by issue. They're making more and more of the male characters like mysterious, like, Hmm, there's a lot we don't know about this one. With the first issue, it was like, Brick has like anger issues and we don't really understand his powers fully. And now we're doing this thing with Matt where it's like, well, he doesn't know where he comes from and we don't really fully understand the depth of his powers yet. But that's why I'm saying it's like they're trying to misdirect away from Dane, who they already introduced pretty strongly in that one scene. So we cut back over to Alinta, who is getting this phone call. And I remember in the my last video doing... Uh, the review of the first issue that I saw the phone had the initials AW and I was like, I don't know what that is. But now that I read it and I know who it is because I'm also reading Suicide Squad, it's Amanda Waller. Because at the end of the last issue of Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller has decided to bring in non-binary Flash because we got to spread some of that. Pride Month is coming, so we got to make sure to spread the LGBT over all the books. So it's kind of like a savory paste, if you will. A delicious jet. Ooh. So they decide to confront all the students and they're getting ready to actually go in there. And as they're going, like the Titans are kind of conferring amongst each other. The only one who actually saw Red X was Nightwing. But Donna is basically saying, like, I trust him. I know if he said he saw Red X, he saw Red X. So they're getting ready to go in and address the students. And then all of a sudden they run into Alinta and Matt who are like coming all of a sudden. So they go, they like shepherd them in or whatever. And then they go, okay, you know what? We need to, we're going to do this. And Starfire kind of agrees, like, you know, confronting them all at once might be the best way to handle this to get them to come out. And Raven's like, yeah, but it might also create bigger problems. So they go in and immediately start like talking, but we cut away and we see Alinta talking to Matt and she's like asking him, like, what did you do? And he says that, you know, like, why do you assume that it's me? And she's like, well, because Stitch asked me if I would switch rooms. Did you do something like so? Apparently, Stitch has been trying really hard to switch rooms. So he's like, well, not that I know of. He says, where have you been? Because Alinta was taking that call from Amanda Waller, basically saying, like, I saved you. I rescued you, whatever, something with Amanda Waller and Alinta. And then, like, 
basically saying, you're going to come in and help the Suicide Squad. But Alinta was like, no, I'm not going to. And so now she's like deleting the contact from her phone. And that's what brings us to what ha- was happening in the beginning of the issue where Alinta has been pursued now by Red X as well. And so she's doing this thing like, are you going to do it or not? And he says, like, I told you to shut up. And then we get this whole thing where he says, like, I'm not going to kill you, but they might. And then it says, now, not if you come quietly. And that's where we see, like, the reveal where, yes, Amanda Waller has sent the Suicide Squad to get Alinta. And this thing with Peacekeeper's helmet, like, they don't even draw the, like, flange or whatever the hell that thing is, the saucer thing. They don't draw it that far out in, like, the main Suicide Squad book. But, I mean, I guess, all right, yeah, like, that's just, wow. But, so, yeah. That's the next thing that's going to happen with this. I guess Alinta's going with the Suicide Squad and maybe we'll find out something with that assembly that the Titans are having with the students. I don't really know. But I mean, overall, like I said, I'm not going to change my opinion that it's actually Dane. Like, I'm still fairly certain that it's Dane. Of everyone they've shown us so far, that's the only one I could see it being. So we'll see how that how that plays out. Like, what exactly is Dane's problem? what are his powers if he has any powers what is he here to do i mean i don't know we'll find out but if that's going to do it for this one so if you guys have read this issue i would love to know what you thought did you see anything that i might have missed any clues in there who do you think red x is do you agree with me that it's probably dane or do you think that it might be matt i don't really see that being the case considering if matt does have that kind of super strength if he was taking on the mantle of red x would he have wasted his time trying to throw the red x's at Nightwing? Couldn't he have just brute forced his way through him? So I don't know. That's why I'm saying, like, I think it's Dane. Because, like, also Brick has powers as well. And Red X has not been shown to actually have powers yet, just been using, like, the X's or whatever. So I don't know. We'll end up seeing what happens with that. But yeah, that's going to do it for me on this video, guys. So if you enjoyed the video, then do feel free to like the video and subscribe if you want to come back for more comic book reviews. And if you're done here, then go read a book. And if not, then I will see you on the next video.